Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be we're going to be talking about team libraries. Well, what are team libraries to begin with? Well, team library is a design library that basically you can access across multiple files, let's say. Um, when you're actually starting out with a personal pen, you'll also get a library that you can access across a bunch of your files, but since you're already going to be limited with the amount of files that you can create on a free plan, this isn't really that powerful on a free plan. It's much more powerful when you have an enterprise license or when you have a team license. So why are these useful? Well, imagine you're working on the Facebook team or let's say the Mattermost team. Uh, you obviously would have separate files for separate features. Perhaps you're working on a, a feature for marketing. You're working, a, you're working on a feature for a chat application. You're working on a feature for let's say I don't know, um, enterprise grade uh, features or anything along those lines. Obviously the application itself is, is gonna have similar patterns, right? It's gonna have the similar font. It's gonna have the similar colors being used. It's gonna have similar components that are being used. You're not necessarily going to create every single component every time that you're creating this file. And you wouldn't actually wanna do that because all of these components need to stay consistent, especially if you're working in a single team, it needs to have the same design language, which is exactly why team libraries are important. You create a large library which contains all of your components, variants, styles, effects, so on and so forth. So you can leverage all of them in a bunch of your files and you can easily just reuse uh, the stuff that you've created. And anytime you come up with a new component, instead of actually adding it in the actual file that you're working on, uh, you actually go ahead and add it back to the team library so you can access it in other projects in the future as well, or other files in the future as well. So how do you actually get started with a team library? Well, it's pretty simple. So here's uh, the file that we actually created um, um, for whenever we were creating the components, we we're creating the buttons. We have some styles here, but actually we don't have any styles. So I'll just go ahead. And instead of actually adding styles, let's just go ahead and do this. So basically you can actually create a, uh, a team library by converting any of your original files into a team library by going into the assets panel. You can go there by pressing the option two key and then you can click on this particular button which is the team library button. Once you click on it, it asks you whether you wanna publish your particular file. And once you do that, the components that you see here, for example, I have some components that I've created are actually going to be accessible in any file in which you actually go ahead and import this particular file as a team library. But before you actually import it, you have to make it and publish it as a design file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna publish it. So as you can see, it's, it tells me that, hey, you have a button component, you have a content component, and then you have a base structure component, and you're publishing this library. Now imagine if I actually had a heading style. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say, this is gonna be my heading one style. And I'm gonna give it, this, give it a color, and I'm gonna say, this is gonna be my primary color style. So now that I have these two things, I'm just doing this to present this particular concept to you. Actually, let me just go to the design library and add it here. So imagine you have something like this and you wanted to make this public for other files to access as well. So what you're gonna do is, you can actually go into the assets and click this button. Otherwise, you can actually use the shortcut key option three to actually access this model and say, I wanna publish this file. And now as you can see, it has the heading style added, it has the color added, it has the content component, and it has the button component. Now it's also taking the base structure uh, of my button component, which I actually don't want to be published. So if you don't wanna, if you don't want something to be published, you can obviously go ahead and, and when you click on publish, you can uncheck it from here. Or if you actually don't wanna publish it, I'm just gonna go to my button component. Let me just see where it is. So here it is. And I just wanna say, I don't wanna publish this thing because this actually is just a structure that I'm using in my buttons, button components. I actually just want my button components to be visible. So in order to do that, I can just go ahead and add a underscore after that particular component. And that component is still gonna be accessible in this particular file. For example, if I search base, as you can see, it's accessible in this file. But now if I go to publish it, it's not gonna be visible in my published changes. It, it, it does tell me that, hey, this base com structure component is private to this file and it would not be published. So that's something really cool to know. 
So I can just go ahead and I can obviously add a description to my changes whenever you're, let's say, making any larger updates to your design library or your team library. Definitely go ahead and add some comments so it's visible to other team members as well and they know which change you have particularly done. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to publish my library. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open one of the files that I, uh, I actually did and I actually created. Now anytime a, a library has any changes, it tells you that, hey, there are some component updates available. Do you want to review them? And I can go ahead and I can say, yeah, let me just review them. And then it says, hey, you have these particular things that have been updated since the last time that you opened this file. So do you want to update them? And I can say, I sure, go ahead and update, up, update it. So again, just to point out that this particular update wasn't related to the recent thing that we did. It's just something that I updated in my other design library and it just shows here as an example. So that's just one way in which you know any updates have been pushed. Um, again, these you, you're not gonna see these updates all the time. You're only going to see them if that particular component style or anything, any element that you just pushed is actually being used in this file. So imagine you have a really large file and in this particular page, in this particular page, you only have, let's say, one component that's used. Even if you update 99 components in the larger team library, but if all of those 99 components aren't really being used in this particular file, it's not necessarily going to matter that much because uh, the updates panel only shows up if you have that component available because, because it likes to let you know that you're going to go ahead and update this particular thing in your design and it may screw up. So just keep an eye out. So that's basically what happens. And now I can go to my libraries and I can see, okay, I can obviously publish this file as well as a library, but now I can actually go down and I can see, okay, hey, that's really cool. I can actually for, see that these are all like a bunch of my libraries that I've created. I haven't created them myself. A lot of libraries are actually available via the community. So you don't have to do everything yourself, but basically now you can see, okay, Here's the library that we just published. I can click here as well and I can see some of the things that are contained in this particular library. I can open the file as well. Once I click on it, as you can see, it takes me to the file and then I can enable it by just pressing this toggle. And now that I've done that, I can, let's say, see, just go to my assets panel and I can see, okay, here it says learn Figma and I can search for a button. And as you can see, now we have the button component that we created in the Figma file or the learn Figma file. And I can go ahead and I can tweak it, do whatever. And now let's say I have this but particular button here. And now if I, let's say, change something here, I'm gonna say that this particular padding is actually gonna be, let's say, 16 from the top. So that's the change that happened. And I'm gonna press the option three button to actually open this panel. And it's gonna ask me, hey, you made a recent change. Do you actually wanna publish it? And I'm gonna say, sure, go ahead. And now that I've done that, I've published it, I go to my, it's, it's, it mentions that it's gonna publish the library, it's publishing it, and now it's published. And now if I go here, as you can see, this particular button, uh, since it's connected to the library, actually detects that there are some changes that were made. So now I can go ahead and I can say, sure, I wanna review some of the new updates that have been made and just mentions that, hey, there were some updates published just a while ago, do you wanna update them? And I'll, I'll be like, sure, why not? And now that I've updated it, as you can see, the padding from the top increased, but obviously I didn't really want to do that. I just wanted to do that to show you guys. And I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to uh, revert that change. I'm going to publish it again. And I am going to see a, uh, an update soon here. I'm going to say review and I'm going to press update all to revert that change. And I'm just going to delete this particular button. So that's basically most of the things that you need to know uh, about team libraries. One other thing that definitely that you probably would want to know about team library is that if you actually have a team plan, you can actually go to the larger team thing. You can go into your, uh, you can go to your settings for that particular team. And you can say that I really want to enable particular libraries by default. So it's, as you can see here, you can actually choose which libraries are enabled by default and I can go to my learn Figma file and I can say anytime a new file is created, if it's a design file, this particular library needs to be enabled by default. And similarly, I can do that for my FigJam files and I can do that for all files in general. So you don't have to worry about Figma and design, you can basically just say all files. And now if you actually create a new file, this particular learn Figma library is actually gonna be available for you. You don't have to go ahead and toggle it or do anything. Uh, in that particular new file. 
I actually don't want this library. I just uh, enabled it to show it to you guys. So you can actually go and click on the library that's published and you can say unpublished because you don't really want this particular file uh, existing as a library. So as you can see, I actually have a separate library created. And as you can see, we have so many text styles. So a bunch of these styles are actually coming from Tailwind. So Tailwind, in my opinion, is a really great way as a starter when you're working on, let's say, projects, when you're working on designs, it has a bunch of color styles included as well, as you can see here. So basically what I did was I um, downloaded a Tailwind library uh, from the community. I incorporated all those styles into my library and then I just basically published the library that I have and now all of these styles are obviously visible in my libraries uh, or sorry in my actually child files. So now for example if I actually type something this is some text. As you can see uh, obviously the components are going to come from here. If you actually go here and I want to grab a component for example, I go to my the small, the small square uh, library and I can say, hey, I actually want to grab a snag bar. So as you can see, if I actually paste it here, the snag bar is here and that's connected to the, the small square uh, team library. But I can also obviously use a bunch of styles that are coming from uh, my library and I can just click here and it, it mentions that, hey, these are a bunch of styles coming from your uh, the small square library. I can choose any number of these styles to actually give a particular color to this text. Similarly, I can go ahead and I can change the font as well. These are some of the fonts that are coming from there. I can say I really want to make this large and bold or probably even larger. And similarly, I have some effects here as well. And I can give these effects uh, to this particular text or image or I don't know, whatever, whatever it is that I want. So yeah, that's pretty much it. These are all the things I think that you ideally you want to know about um, a team library, a design library and how to use them. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to let me know if there's anything specific that you'd like to see, anything specific that you'd like, you'd want me to cover. But until then, I'll see you later. Take care.